Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to check out this 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Tim Go, formerly Tim Got. This is a budget friendly offering from the company. It comes with all kinds of accessories and packed full of features. It's meant for the golf cart community, but it has merits for off-grid applications as well. So I'm going to find out today if this battery has a high quality build or if it's a pile of junk. So if you're looking for the full test teardown interview on this battery, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So now time for the capacity test on the Timgo, formerly Tim Got, golf cart battery right here. So there it is. There's your Bluetooth address, the Mac ID for the battery, corresponding Mac ID. The battery was charged a couple hours ago, still holding good voltages. I am going to hit it one more time with the charger to make sure we're completely topped off. So just showing you the sampling shunt and wiring and all the other batteries in the system are disconnected. All right, charger's back on, so we'll make sure this battery is completely full. I'm going to show you the temperatures and things on this app. This is a pretty decent little app, Tim Goes self-developed app. So you can see right there, battery voltage, time to full, balancing is on, protections is normal. So pretty decent little app so far. I like it. It's got uh, plenty of information right there. You can see the battery temperature. The cells are 82, 83, and this temperature here is the actual BMS, the sensor for it. So showing you the temperatures before the test, gives us our cell voltages down through here. So pretty good little app. The charger has completed its sequence on the Timgo golf cart battery. You can see the battery voltage is 58 point two volts corresponding well across all the other measuring devices so our highest cell is 3.69 so they're letting the cells go above 3.65 so that's interesting most of the other manufacturers stop the high cell at 3.65 so i'll have to check the programming in this bms if i can and see what their high cell voltage threshold is not used to seeing them let them go that high and the inverter on now i apply the load so the inverter's on, here goes the load. Let it pick up, we'll get a final reading for what this battery's gonna be discharged at for the duration of the capacity test. So the load, roughly 21 and a half amps, 1137, 38 watts right there. Showing 21.6 on the display right there. And let me scroll up on the Bluetooth for you. Estimated four hours and 35 minutes till empty, and they're showing 1145 watts calculated off the BMS 1138 on the shunt right there. So let this thing pull down and we'll see what it's got. And I'll check back in with you in a few hours. Almost at the halfway mark or estimated halfway mark on the Tim Go battery. So there we go. 2560 watt hours 2.56 kilowatts. That's estimated halfway out of the nominal rated 5120. It's about to reach the rated capacity on the Timgo 100 amp hour battery. So there we go, 5,120 watt hours. We've reached rated capacity as advertised by Timgo and I'll keep it running, see how much more we get. All right, a little bit over 102 amp hours on the Timgo so far. The inverter should, there it went, the inverter just cut off at 44 volts. So the low voltage cut off on my inverter went first. So I got 5,240 watt hours divided by a nominal 51.2 volts. What does that net? 102.34 amp hours and the battery still has energy left in it. Not bad at all. So if you decide to pick up one of these units, what do you get besides the battery? Well, you get a remote mount display screen right here. You get the Bluetooth app. So this is a Bluetooth smart BMS. You can use the app or the display to see what your battery is doing. They give you a 18 amp charger to charge this battery or similar 16S lithium iron phosphate batteries. You get screws to mount the display. You get some small little bolts to attach the charger to whatever surface you're attaching it to. You get short and long terminal bolts for the battery itself. They give you a manual, a wiring diagram, a warranty card, and how to get in touch with them and after sale service support, things like that. 
I want to make a quick note. This is a golf cart kit. Tim Go has had this battery out for, you know, two or three months. When this first came out and hit the market, they included another accessory that's not included anymore. Now, the price point on this kit is a little lower than it was a couple of months ago, but before you would get this 12 volt converter if you bought this battery kit so now they don't include this 12 volt converter so you have to have an additional cost so be aware of that if you're looking at this for a golf cart you're going to have some kind of converter to take this 51.2 volt down to 12 volts to power all your 12 volt accessories so you can get these for between you know 35 to 40 bucks depending on what your wattage or current draw requirements are for your golf cart so just want you to be aware of that and here are the quick tech specs, the battery specifications provided by Timgo. So you can see the weight of the battery is 87.1 pounds. Here are some other specifications right here. Please make note of these currents and things like that because I'm going to access the Bluetooth program parameters. And we're going to check and see if the program parameters match what they have claimed in their booklet right here. And if you're curious to where the COM port is for the display right here, your screen connection, it is underneath the positive and negative terminals on the side of the battery. There's no alignment mark right there on the four pin adapter. So it just goes in the side, line up, find the little alignment mark right there, thread it down, and then you can power up your display. Uh, so I want to show you something before I go further with this battery. Uh, this is not exclusive to Timgo. I'm just going to pick on them today because this is the sample I have in front of me right here. Most of these golf cart batteries are now using a JBD SP24S BMS, and they have a flaw that could be a safety issue. So I want to make you aware of that. Pro possibly, I'm um, estimating from what I've seen, 75 to 80 percent of the golf cart batteries produced in the last few months have this board in it due to the high current carrying capabilities uh, and performance of the board but here is the flaw so these display screens you know pretty generic screen on any jbd based bms you can scroll through the screens there it's not lockable anybody can come through and touch your screen so here is where the issue is at so if you go to page two you have your discharge and charge fet switches so you can see right here the battery is powered up and it's live to the terminals so you can turn the charge fet on and off with no problem right so say you're riding down the street and somebody's touching your display or you're touching your display and come over here and touch the discharge fet it's over with your golf cart immediately stops dead in the water and you cannot get it back on look at that this battery is dead you're stranded unless you know how to fix it so to correct this situation you need a phone or a tablet and you think you could use their app you know the one they provide for you to use their self-developed app to turn this switch back on so you have to use an app and go and manually turn the switch on but their app will not let you turn the switch on it will not let you have any kind of control over the battery so you're still stuck and you're having a bad day so pick this app right here it will help you so you can see the FET software lock right there so come over here to the discharge switch hit the discharge switch and now you're back in business hope that helps somebody out if you ever run into this situation so either don't use this display, disconnect it from your battery, use your Bluetooth on your phone or whatever through the Timgo app exclusively, or don't let anybody touch your uh, touch your display screens on this. I said, it's a lot of batteries, not just this one. Go over the program settings on the board on the Timgo battery. What you can see here is the BMS model number I was referencing, the SP24S. And those are the ones that have that fault in them. So just letting you know about that. So hopefully it keeps you from having any issues. So let me go to the settings menu now and see how this board is programmed from the factory, what kind of settings they have in it. It's a 16S battery, 100 amp hours, 80 amp hours is a cycle. There's your cell voltages, the calculations that the BMS uses. They have the balancer on at the 15 millivolt differential at 3.4 volts per cell. Here are our program settings for our safety triggers. So you can see the high temp right there, the low temp, which is properly programmed, zero to five. And then we got a discharge over temp, which is good for high amperage or high current golf cart batteries. And we have a over voltage of this on this one is 60 volts. Uh, that's pretty high. They got that one way up there. And then the under voltage of 35. So they got a wide spread on there, I guess, since it's a golf cart application. I want you to be able to wring every ounce of energy out of the cells, which also corresponds with the cell over and under voltage settings right here so you can see 3.75 volts per cell that's that's good ways up there 
and then the cell under voltage at 2.2 volts per cell. And then their charge and discharge overcurrent is set at 300 amps, a level two overcurrent, you know, 560 amps for 1280 milliseconds. I almost forgot one thing that the battery does come with two ratchet straps. I've already used one for another purpose, but if you need the ratchet straps to tie it down to your golf cart, it comes with it. But give you an overview of the battery right here. It's got the handles on the side right there so you can pick it up. A pretty good graphics kit and then a little COM port right there on the side, of course. No graphics on the back. And the manufacturer asked me to please not do a teardown on this battery. So I don't think it'd be a battery video without a teardown, right? Well, I've been down that road before, so give me just a minute. I'm going to open it up and we're going to see how this thing is built. All right, so I got the lid most of the way off. Got a little bit of sealant right here on the end. There we go. Pop that off. So let's take a look at this battery. All right, we'll start off with the wiring on this battery going to the terminals. We've got hydraulic crimp connections. Everything is tight, but they're using two sixes for positive and negative for something that's programmed to carry 300 amps for over two minutes. Uh, yeah, fours would have been a lot better. Twos would have been even better than that. I mean, it's a short wire run, but still two sixes for something that can carry 300 amps. Mm. You know, another couple of bucks to make this dual number fours, which had been super cool. But all the connections are super tight in this battery. Nothing's loose in it, and they have got some kind of sealant on top of everything. I've not yet to find anything loose in the battery, so that's always good. And there's your shot of the BMS model number right there, the JBD SP24S 200 amp rated BMS. And the board is glued down to this sheet of epoxy board with double-sided double adhesive foam tape right there. It's not coming off. The epoxy board will come off where the BMS does. And you may have noticed the cell orientation on this battery. They are horizontal, so all the terminals are facing the outside of the case right there. This is just our series jumper. It's continuing the pack to make the 16S configuration. Uh, dual terminals on all their welded on connectors right there. So everything's tied and has some thread locker sealant on it. We got two temperature sensors on the board right here, two NTC sensors. And then this model BMS also has a chip on board sensor to measure the temperature of the fat bridge. But you can see the side of the case and how close the bus bars are to the side right there. So, you know, if you had a big impact on the case, you could uh, run into an issue right there. Now, that's not a lot of clearance down in there. So I tried to get the cells out of the case. If I look down the side down through here, they have the cells bedded in some kind of adhesive down in the bottom. It's not coming out. I, I tried until I uh, about broke my bench here, beating on the pack, dropping it, trying to get them to come loose. They won't come loose. So all I could get them out is to destroy the case, but I'm not destroying the case because I still want to run this in a golf cart and test it that way as well. I did manage to get uh, one of the sensors the NTC sensor is loose from over here. It was glued down to the cell in a proper location. So you can see the adhesive right there making good contact down there. So I was able to fish that out. And then there is some test data on the cells. Let me get you a little closer shot of that. I tried to use an inspection mirror in there with a flashlight and tried to read the QR codes, but they're all bound up in the tapes. They got the packing tape all the way around the pack, wrapped this way, wrapped this way. But there is epoxy board between all the cells, but I just can't get a QR reading for you. And they have a test data sticker on the side. So factory test data 105, 412 of 25 right there. And then there's one right here that's showing 105. So one down, see right here. So it's got test data on it, uh, indicating all around 105. We got the case spaced out just a little bit right here so we can look down and they're kind of sure they do have wire loom on all the balance leads and there is thread sealant on all the balance lead connections expansion joints on the bus bars epoxy board separate material between everything so not terrible at all i mean it looks fairly decent down through there pretty good organization all right so i do have the sensor removed i'm going to check for high and low temp protection on the timgo battery i'm going to use the charger their charger right here so let me plug it in and get started charging so I'll show you the readings right here. As you can see that we're charging, there goes the current up 
on the charger right there into the battery. So we're pushing 934 watts, 17.9 amps into the battery, 8.5 amps here, 17.8 there. So there's a little bit of a lag between the Bluetooth and the actual hardwired display. So just be aware of that. So we're gonna do a high temp first. T2 is the sensor I have pulled right here. So you'll see the temperature climb up here. So look for the little alarm icon right here. Then I'll show you the alarm on the app. So let me apply heat to the sensor and just verify that it works. All right, there we went on the alarm. You see the little alarm icon right there. So let me go back up here. We should be right there, high temp charging protection. So that works. Go back down here to the sensor. See, it's at 183 degrees. So the alarm icon right here will go away once that temperature sensor cools back down. All right, there it went. So back to charging in a moment. Give the charger a second. And there goes the charger after its slight delay. Now the same thing again, but with an ice pack to check low temp charge protection. So I'll take the sensor, wrap it up in my ice pack right there. And we'll see if the low temp charge protection is functional. So remember, sensor T2 right there. Okay, we're about to cross the freezing threshold. There we go, right below freezing now. So I should have a slight delay. There we went. It actually, what happened to the app? Oh, it dropped the app out when it went to the low temp charge protection. So you can see right there, it said cut on the display right here and we lost the app completely. I've seen that before on other batteries when you trigger a safety that it drops out the app, usually with Zhao Zhang Electric, uh, little elephant app, but uh, third party apps, manufacturer apps, I've not seen that. So that's interesting. So let me warm the sensor back up and see if we get the app back. Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, I've... <laughs> Okay, well, and back to charging. Interesting. Let me see if the app drops out again. Let's try that one more time. See if the app will drop out again just like that. The app drops out again, so found a bug. So I was unaware that that was going to happen. So just letting you know. It's winter time and your battery is below freezing and your app doesn't work. You know that you have low temp charge protection. Uh, okay. Let me share one more point about this BMS, this SP24 series. A lot of your golf cart batteries that are using this won't detect any current below two amps and the battery actual BMS will shut down after a time delay. Uh, Tim Gott does not have the, it, that issue with this BMS. They programmed this BMS. A little pickup around 0.8 of an amp and higher. A lot of other golf cart BMSs will be two to three amps before they even register any current. So be aware of that. This one is a lot more sensitive to current than many other batteries using these same BMS. So I want to share my final thoughts on the Timgo 51.2 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and it's a golf cart kit really but it's set up for other applications requiring a 16s lithium iron phosphate battery everything is fairly neat and tidy in this battery especially considering the price point on this is very budget friendly just be aware of the bugs and the issues and hopefully this little display screen uh, information right here will help somebody out uh, in case you run into an issue with these displays and this model BMS right here. So if you're interested in looking further into this Timgo battery, I'll provide a convenient link in the video description down below so you can easily find this battery and check current price points. Is this something you could use for a golf cart application, an off-grid application, RV or marine or other applications? Please let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're there, do you have any Timgo or Timgot products? Please share your experience and feedback. Any questions about this battery, let me know. I will answer to the best of my abilities. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one. Special thanks to Timgo for providing this battery sample for today's video so I can test and demonstrate your battery's capabilities and functionality. You got a few things to work on, but that's what I'm here for, to find them.